This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. When is Tesla ever going to build that Gigafactory in Mexico? In March, it announced it would build an assembly plant in Nuevo Leon, and there was talk it would start building cars there in about a year. But not much has happened. Tesla has a reputation for building plants at breakneck speed, but it hasn't been that way with this one. Right now, it's not expected to open until 2025 or even 2026. Part of the problem is getting all the proper permits. But Elon Musk also deliberately slowed the investment in the plant, citing high interest rates and uncertainty with the global economy. Tesla's revolutionary assembly process, called Unboxed, was supposed to debut at the Mexican plant to build a $25,000 car that some are calling the Model 2. But now Musk says that the $25,000 car will first be built in Austin, Texas. Speaking of Musk, maybe he's a bit worried about the UAW making inroads into Tesla. The company is giving workers at its battery plant in Nevada a 10% raise in January, and some are going to get a raise of more than $8 an hour. Meanwhile, the UAW seems to be making progress in its attempt to unionize Volkswagen's manufacturing complex in Chattanooga, Tennessee. UAW President Sean Fain was in Chattanooga to deliver a letter demanding the company give up its union-busting activities, something the company strongly denies. Fain's presence suggests that the UAW got 50% of the workers at the plant to sign cards saying they want a union. He said he would personally go to plants that hit that 50% threshold. In the union's last live stream, Fain said over a thousand VW workers had signed cards in the first week and that hundreds more had signed up since. That first thousand represents over 30% of the workers at the plant. So it may have hit that 50% mark, but we still don't know for sure because the union is insane. It was hard enough for car companies to turn a profit selling EVs. Now Germany has made it even harder. The country just eliminated a 6,750 euro subsidy for purchasing an EV. It says the government can't afford to pay it. So a number of automakers say they will pay for the subsidy themselves. Tesla, Volkswagen, Stellantis, and Mercedes-Benz will give buyers the full discount for EVs delivered by the end of the year. VW, Stellantis, and Mercedes will also provide a reduced subsidy for buyers who purchase an EV through early next year. No doubt other automakers will be forced to follow suit to stay competitive. But this just blew a big hole in all their efforts to sell EVs at a profit. Nikola's founder and former CEO Trevor Milton is going to prison. Yesterday, a U.S. district judge in Manhattan sentenced Milton to four years behind bars for misleading shareholders about the development of the company's products and technology. But the judge did allow Milton to remain free on bail while he appeals the decision. Last year, a jury convicted Milton of securities and wire fraud. Milton claimed he did not intend to mislead investors and blamed his mistakes on his lack of experience as a CEO. You may remember that Trevor was a guest on AutoLine After Hours before many of these accusations came up. And a number of you called him a fraud then. And we should have paid more attention to that. If you were one of those people, pat yourself on the back because you saw right through that fraudster. While you could say companies like General Motors, Bosch, and Iveco that did deals with Nikola were taken for a ride. At CES January 9th through 12th, 2024, Intrepid's looking forward to seeing you at our booth 3666 Las Vegas Convention Center in the West Hall. We'll be demonstrating the latest and greatest in the software-defined vehicles and Zornal architectures, automotive Ethernet technologies like 10-base T1S and multi-gigabit. See you at CES 2024 Las Vegas Convention Center in West Hall Booth 3666 or visit intrepidcs.com slash sales. Earlier this month, the U.S. Treasury Department issued its EV tax credit guidance which limited the amount of materials batteries can contain from China. 
but it did exempt some trace minerals from China and other foreign entities of concern for two years because most EVs would have been ineligible to qualify for the incentives. However, Senator Joe Manchin is unhappy with that exemption and is trying to get it reversed. He says it will hurt taxpayers and make it easier for Chinese companies to receive EV tax credits. However, it's not clear if the Senate can override a Treasury guidance, so yesterday Manchin asked the Government Accountability Office for a legal opinion on the matter. So we'll have to wait and see how this battle ends up. We just saw a massive step forward in automotive electronics with Tesla switching to a 48-volt system in the Cybertruck. And if NEO can deliver on its promises, we'll see another leap two years from now. The Chinese EV startup's new flagship sedan called the ET9 is said to be launching in 2025 with a fully wire-controlled chassis. Car News China reports that means most of the car's critical parts, including the throttle, gear shifts, suspension, steering and brakes, will all be controlled with electronic inputs instead of mechanical. The luxury model will also feature its own computing system called the Vehicle Management Computer that will handle all of these functions, and when combined with the fully wired chassis, it will make integrating other technologies like autonomous driving even easier. The ET9 is meant to compete against high-end luxury cars from Audi, BMW, and Mercedes, and it will use tech like this to set itself apart from the crowd. If you hadn't heard, the final Chrysler 300 rolled off the assembly line recently, which leaves Chrysler with only one model in its lineup, the Pacifica minivan. And according to brand CEO Christine Fuel, it's only going to have one model for about a year. Last month, she revealed Chrysler will come out with a BEV in 2025, inspired by the airflow concept, and it will keep the hybrid version of the Pacifica around until the end of the decade. Fuel is providing even more details about these plans and says a, quote, pretty significant refresh of the Pacifica will come out some point after it launches the BEV. While we don't have too much to go on, she says it will be more than just a moderate refresh. Toyota revealed the new plug-in hybrid version of the Crown Sport. We've previously shown the standard hybrid model, and it either has some of the biggest brakes in the entire world, or there's a misprint in the press release. It claims the PHEV will have 20-inch ventilated disc brakes and 20-inch aluminum opposing six-piston calipers fitted into 21-inch wheels. We googled biggest brakes, and the optional carbon ceramic brakes on the Lamborghini Urus are listed as the biggest at 440 millimeters or 17.3 inches. So, we've reached out to Toyota to see if its numbers are correct, and while we wait on a response, we can give you some of the other details on the car. It provides all-wheel drive from a 2.5-liter engine and an electric motor that combine for 225 kilowatts, or about 300 horsepower. While Toyota doesn't say how big the battery is, it says it provides up to 90 kilometers, or roughly 56 miles of range. The model will also offer bi-directional charging and a 1,500-watt external power supply. Sales of the Crown Sport PHEV are starting now in Japan with a base price right around $53,000. Automakers and suppliers are playing around with generative AI to figure out how to boost their productivity. Autoline has spoken to various suppliers who are using AI to write code, and Forvia says it thinks AI can cut its R&D costs in half before the end of the decade. But Automakers and suppliers have also told Autoline that using ChatGPT is dangerous because once you allow it to access your data for analysis, that data is now in the public domain. So all these companies are using their own private internal generative AI to do the work. The styling of the Cybertruck sure has stirred up a lot of controversy, but it's probably the most technologically advanced vehicle ever made. And that's what we'll be talking about on Autoline After Hours this Thursday with Sandy Monroe. Tu Lee from Sino Auto Insights will be with us, and so will Joe White from Reuters. 
and they're going to bring a healthy dose of skepticism with them. So, don't miss out on this show. And a programming note here, Thursday will be the last day of the year for Autoline, but we'll hit the ground running on January 3rd as we gear up for the convention madness called CES. And that's all for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey, and by Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game,